John, we're ready to apply the coatings. So in our package here, we have C6 Hydro and an applicator. Beautiful. A lot of installers, what they do with this package, they'll put in a nice microfiber towel and give it to the customer afterwards. So nice little, nice little touch. Beautiful packaging. Yeah. And the pièce de résistance, C6 Hydro bottle. This is a one ounce bottle. This will be enough to do this car and maybe another. Uh, like any good coating, you don't need to put it on thick. You don't need to swim in the coating. It's not necessary. It's an aluminum bottle, so you're not gonna see through it, but you can feel the, the coating is in there. It's a very light bottle. The applicator, foam applicator. And to start, we're gonna be putting maybe 10 or 12 drops. Now my applicator is primed, I can start applying it to the surface. John, we have the two leveling towels there. So we have the gray, which is our leveling towel, the black, which is our insurance wipe. And then from here, normally I would box in a panel and fill in the center. Since I'm priming my pad, I want to start in the center and you see how thick that is. I don't want it that thick. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep spreading this further and further until I get the look and the feel that I'm after which is just, for lack of a better term, a snail trail on the surface. I just want coating to be applied. I don't want the panel to be swimming in coating. I don't need the panel to have it on super thick. Still have an excess here, so let me lift some into the pad. There we go. Then I'll do the other side of the, the hood. And as you can see, the coating almost self-levels. The high spots just sort of load away and now that I've done about you know two-thirds three-quarters of this hood I'm starting to feel a little bit of drag on my applicator so I'm just gonna add one drop you don't need to add two you don't need to have three just one additional drop and keep going Applying in a circular motion, you're going to get a much more even application. Uh, as you can see, do you see many high spots on here? Not that I can notice. Is there anything to level? I barely can't see it. Yeah. So give it a pass with the gray towel and then a pass with the black towel. It should feel almost immediately slick. Sliding right across it. Yeah. So by the base of the windshield there, there's a little just in the corner. And that was a heavy application to begin with because I was priming my pad. From here forward, I only add one drop at a time and I only add it if I feel that I need to add it. So if I'm starting to feel drag in the applicator, that's when I'm gonna add a little more. And how long can you let this sit? You wanna let it sit for 30 seconds minimum. And depending on the heat and humidity, the flash time is anywhere between one and three minutes. If you're in a really cold environment, which probably you shouldn't be, uh, then five, five minutes would be the maximum. One of the things that makes this a professional grade coating, obviously, the simplicity of insulation. For me, a professional coating should be the easiest coating on the market to install because you may have your employees installing it. Uh, you don't have time and you don't have to think about, oh, did I do that? Didn't I do that? Uh, you don't need 18 towels. You don't need a, a convoluted method of applying it. It's just get it on the paint, level it, be happy. One additional drop, and I'll be able to do this whole fender. And I always overlap onto the next panel. So in this case, I've gone to the bumper. I've gone over the light. And I'll go onto the door, onto the A-pillar, and onto the hood. And this is safe on all materials on the outside of the car? Everything except the tires. No rubber. No rubber. Wiper blades as well. Keep it off the wiper blades. 
I like to keep the glass till the end myself. That way, if I do have a bit of accumulation in my pad, all I need to do is add a bit of pressure and that's gonna get rid of that accumulation, depositing it onto the, the glass. You never wanna put pressure on paint. So after the front fender, I'll have done the A-pillar, the roof hoop, and the back fender. Those of you working as a team in your shop, always announce what you're doing. I don't care how long you've been working with the person, just announce what you're doing as you're going along, because sometimes you may not do it exactly the same way as last time. Every vehicle is different, and it might be more logical for you to do it one way than another way in a certain vehicle. Having a standard operating procedure is great, it's necessary, but sometimes it's just a little quicker to deviate from that SOP. Now while John is doing the roof hoop and the back fender, I can move to the front door. I'm not in his way, he's not in mine. So starting with, at the A pillar and just move your way back. The other aspect of the C6 Hydro and the C6 Diamond Gloss is that if you get a high spot, you're not gonna have a good day. So you want to make sure that you're getting rid of all those high spots before it cures. Because if not, you're wet sanding. So John, the mirror is next and the passenger side window. I'll get out of your way, do the back door while you're doing the mirror. I did a little quarter window here. What is it you like about ceramic coatings? Uh, I, I like that they're, uh, you know, it increases gloss, it gives protection on the paint from the elements, whether you're in the desert or you're in you know, a, a colder climate. Um, it's easier to clean when you're doing maintenance washes. Um, it's just an extra layer of protection on top of the paint. There we go. Having experienced C6 on paint, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's extremely slick. I uh, Even driving with a little bit of snow we have out here right now, I could see that the moisture was just rolling straight off the hood or up the hood while driving on the quarter we did. Yeah. And the rest of it was just sticking to it. The rest of the water was sticking to the, to the hood. Front door. Now while John is up there doing the front door and he won't be able to see me, I'm actually going to leave a part of this section uncoated. See if he feels it with the, uh, the towel. By the time he gets here he won't be able to see it. So.
So deck lid spoiler, or deck lid, and then just a light bar with the Porsche name in it across the back. And there's one little section I didn't do. Don't look at it too closely. Don't look at it too closely. I want you to feel yep. where it is. Where you didn't put it. Right. Right here? Exactly. And what's the difference in feeling? Uh, for slick to a little bit of grip to slick again. Yeah, so if you're applying with a partner, you can tell that uh, they screwed up somewhere or they missed a spot. Missed a spot, yeah. yeah. Uh, just the, oh, the just light the itself, yeah. Yeah, and then in between those pesky little letters. Expensive letters. Yeah. From there, I'm just working my way from one side of the bumper to the other, top to bottom. See, so from that corner, keep coming across. John, you're a Audi fan? Oh yeah, Euro fan. Audi and Porsche. Those are, those are what I like. So the rear bumper all the way to the corner. Did you do the window, Liz? No. Okay. Spot that I missed you got. Yep. What are some of the major differences between diamond gloss and hydro? Basically, they're both lifetime coatings for all intents and purposes. The big difference is what does your customer want? If your customer wants the ultimate in hydrophobic self-cleaning, they're going to go for hydro. If they want gloss, 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 more gloss, and they're still not satisfied, they want more gloss, then diamond gloss is the one they need. So rear fender, A pillar, then the mirror. And the mirror includes the, the, wind, the glass in it. Another quarter glass is done as well. What, the little quarter window? Yeah. 
And one thing I'm noticing when I'm removing the coating here is that it doesn't really seem like I'm needing to level or remove uh, heavier portions of it. It's just went on so smoothly and coming off equally as smooth. Yeah, it goes on very smoothly and it's very much as self-leveling as a coating can get really. And that's, you know, by design, like I mentioned before, professional installed coating should not be difficult to install. It should be easy to install. A lot of professionals, they're not the ones installing the coating, it's their employees. It needs to be something that's easy to train on, quick and intuitive to pick up, and without any, shall we say, booby traps. Coatings that you have to really work at and go over and back over and over again and inspect with 18 different lights on different angles. It's just a waste of time. Ease of effort with this one. Yeah. So back door, front door, we'll have the front bumper, and then we'll finish off with the windows. And if we're gonna coat the wheels uh, with C6, are we gonna need to use uh, the app on it? Yes. Uh, now, do you need to apply it with a polisher? No, you can just put on a microfiber towel and do it that way. If you want to polish the wheels with it, by all means, but it can be just hand, hand applied. But think of it as the only panel prep that you should ever, ever even consider using with C6. Front door, including the little vent and the fender. How come we don't have a uh, wheel specific coating? Uh, very simply, the wheel actually gets less abuse than the fender right behind the wheel. So it doesn't need a specific coating. And when you're dealing with a wheel, you're dealing with clear coat. It's the same type of clear coat that's on the rest or the painted areas of the body of the vehicle, which is plastic. And we're dealing with plastic, whether it's the trim, whether it's the wheels, whether it's the headlights, it's all plastic. That's what we're coating in reality. So no, we don't have a wheel specific coating. To me, having a wheel specific coating is as logical as having a right front fender coating. Now, if, you know, in five years from now, if technology advances, and we actually do create something that's actually better on wheels and the regular coatings, then sure, we might have one. But for the moment, there's no need. Can we spray apply the coating? Uh, no, definitely not. The industrial coating, yes, it has to be spray applied. The automotive coatings and the marine coating, it is strictly hand applied. Spraying a coating is extremely dangerous. There's chemicals in here that, like this, it's not a problem. But when they get on your skin, that becomes a problem. The fluorination in them makes them very dangerous for our skin, very dangerous for that. And I've seen people apply coatings and they have, like us, they have gloves on, but they have their sleeves rolled up and they might have a little mask. But they're applying this very, very toxic sprayed on coating. Uh, basically, you should look like you're, you're ready to go into a hazmat situation when you're applying a spray coating. So our, our installers that are doing the industrial coating, they have the proper protection when they're doing that. We make sure we won't sell them the coating unless they can prove that they have everything they need. And if we see them on social media doing it without the proper protection, they're probably not gonna be an installer too much longer. Safety first. Safety first, uh, we don't want to be killing our installers. You know, it's not, a, it's not a good thing. We want you sticking around as long as possible. Now we say the diamond gloss has phenomenal gloss, but even the hydro has phenomenal gloss. This car is looking sweet. Oh yeah. Once we're done this, We'll go around the vehicle one more time just to inspect for high spots because as I mentioned before, you don't want to leave any high spots with this. If you do, it's not a good day. 
The other thing, uh, I still have a glass to coat while John does a, a final walk around inspecting. We'll wipe off the glass. Then we need to wait one hour. And that is a minimum. If you can keep it overnight, if you can keep it a couple hours, great. But if your customer is in a rush, one hour after you are finished the application, it can actually drive away in the rain. Is that the ideal situation? No, a couple hours better, but one hour can be done. If it's a beautiful sunny day and there's no chance of rain for the next hour, you can literally finish wiping and drive it away. To a car owner, how do you, how do you explain the longevity of the coating? Uh, very simply, properly maintained, it is going to last the lifetime of the vehicle. And proper maintenance doesn't mean a yearly topper, doesn't mean we're putting anything on, it means we're not covering the coating with salt. We're making sure that it's decontaminated on a regular basis. And when it's properly decontaminated, there's no problems. Uh, and that decontamination, for some customers, it's every six months. For other customers, it's once a year. For other customers, it's every five years. Is it a garage kept car? Is it only driven on the weekends? Do they not take it out when it's raining? Or is it a daily driver that sits out in an industrial lot all week. So that is really the difference and that's what a, that is what is going to determine when decontamination is necessary. I can do the, the windows. So from the windshield and the whole roof. Both sides or just this side? Just this side so far. So just work front to back. Now there's so little on my applicator that I'm doing the windows and I'm having to put more into the applicator is not a problem but just like I said if you can leave the windows to last that way you can use every last drop that's in your applicator so across the roof down the hatch and then across here, across here. yeah I missed the spot there we go What products do you recommend to use for maintenance uh, after coating? So the DIY line to begin with, and eventually in the C6 line, we are working on a few maintenance items. So a soap and a rinseless and a, a drying aid. But for the moment, the DIY line is perfectly compatible, does a great job. At C6 installers, you have access to the DIY line. So it's not a, not a hidden, it's not a hidden fact that DIY and C6 are related companies and your customer is gonna get great satisfaction out of using the DIY products. You can teach them how to use them uh, and you make, a bit of, you make a few points on them. So here, found a little high spot. So I'm just going to apply a little more coating and I'll have to work it in and just keep moving it around, keep moving it around, and eventually the high spot will go away. Now this is maybe, what, 20 minutes after we installed it? So you just have to be very safe with your high spots. So you need to be extremely vigilant with your high spots, making sure there are none. And I think I got it. Yeah, we got it. We're safe. And you did the, no, the roof on the other side. Not there yet. Roof, windshield. 
Did you start this way or did you go back? Back to front. John, there we have it. Thank you for helping me on this. What are your thoughts? That was the easiest coating I've ever installed. I mean, it went on, came off, looks great. High spots are easy to take care of. Yeah. Gloss is unbelievable. Yeah, and the hydrophobics are even more unbelievable. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. If you want to reach myself or John, it's info at C6 Ceramics or Ivan at C6 Ceramics. We'll see you in the next one.